Here you, Ruby, let's go. to talk about it, the Candid Conversation Show with Muriel and Ruby, where we discuss topics that are unspoken and taboo in our community. Like, for real? <laughs> you gotta put in the work. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I just, choices, exactly. opportunity, That's right. and drive will get you anything you want. You can do anything you want. Right. You put your mind the to it. It's very attainable. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I have to admit, you know, our current president made me feel like I could be a president one day. Yeah, I don't know if I would want to be, <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm saying, if he can do it, anybody I can, can it. right? Too. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, definitely, and, and that's another thing, like, I, being a dreamer, I love it. You're I tell it. all people, continue to dream. That's right. And there's a separation in people. Some people have given up on dreams. Mm -hmm. And some people are dreamers, and we don't see things out of eye. If I didn't mention that, we would have never known, because a lot of us just keep quiet, and mm -hmm. I did for many, many years. So you also went through something? My, um, my daughter's dad mm -hmm. and I had a very tumultuous relationship, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of physical, mm -hmm. wow. a lot of emotional. And um, I, I stayed for the fact of I didn't want her to come up like no, me in a single, course, in a single, a single but it household. wasn't worth my life. Right. Yes, it wasn't. It wasn't or worth hers my life. to see that line. Or hers, right. yes, and just that whole vibe. Mm -hmm. And I just kept praying, please don't give me a crying baby because that's all I seem to do <laughs> is cry. But um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what you do experience mm -hmm. does rub off on your children. It does. And that's why I deal with, you know, mostly single moms now and their daughters. Right. Welcome, welcome to the show, Shannon. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're so happy to have you. Yes. And Glad I'm you delighted as well. Yes. We like to lead at the beginning of the show with having the guests share a little bit about their childhood with us because we feel that your childhood is the foundation to who we become as adults. Because strong people begin as broken children. Can you share a little bit of your childhood with us? Wow, what a wonderful segue. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you are so correct. Um, and so to speak to what you just said a while ago, Ruby, I was molested as mm. a five-year-old. Oh, no. And that wasn't even the issue. Oh, no. I was blamed it's for it. illness is very prevalent, and it's a, a blessing and a pleasure that you guys have me on the show even talking about it. You know, I know yes. you could have got so many other people, but I thank you. Oh, yes. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah, we've been following you, and we know that you have your own issues with uh, mental health, and we wanted to hear a little bit about that. Yes. Well, I was diagnosed in um, 2013 with bipolar, schizophrenia, and um, PTSD. And um, first, you know, I didn't have any type of uh, understanding of it until I started to research it myself, and then I was like, wow. You know, I am paranoid because I seen friends get shot in front of me, get murdered in front of me. Wow. You know, I always had to walk around like something can happen to me, right. you know, at any time. Right. So, and you know, when you're growing up, you have all types of model, kill or be killed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'd, rather be, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. Mm -hmm. and so all of those type of terminology right plays with your psyche. Oh, yes. So you walk around angry like a lot of young men who you see in a hip hop community. Mm -hmm. A lot of young men who you see that successful athletes walk around with that same type of aggression mm -hmm. because they didn't know how to manage it or deal with it exactly. or had a mentor or someone that right. helped Help them deal exactly. with it. Tisha, I struggle with ongoing depression and I know in 2009 you hit a point where you were depressed. How did you overcome that? Before we even go into that, mm -hmm. I want to say something that, you know, and to anybody out there, a lot of people think depression doesn't look like us, mm -hmm. okay? Depression doesn't wear weave, you know, it mm -hmm. doesn't have Louis Vuitton. It do mm -hmm. Depression doesn't matter who it who is, you are. where you come from, what degrees you, what have. Degrees you have, what titles, titles you're wearing, 
it is a mental illness. Mm -hmm. And before I recognized that, it was something that I was ashamed of, right? Mm -hmm. right? So just taking you back in a little backstory, because mm -hmm. people get into depression for various reasons. Anything. You know, anything. Mine happened to be 2009, what people are experiencing now. Okay. Okay. Lost my six-figure job. You know, mm -hmm. we moved here, big American dream. Oh, my right. husband, you know, mm -hmm. meet my American boy, yeah. okay. got married, you know, everything's great. Right. He's had got his six-figure job, mm -hmm. so have I, life is good. Mm -hmm. 2009 comes. I wasn't even used to the at-will situation that mm -hmm. they have in Florida. In London, they'll give you notice. So right. once, you know, they start crunching them numbers in the office and people have to go, some of those with the biggest salaries are the they first, first they look at, That's right? right. So I was one of those. And it was like, see you later. Mm -hmm. You haven't been working with us long enough. Uh, to you're like, get how could you do this to me? Saw the pain in my daughter's eyes. Has she watched the strong mother she'd always, you know, and it gets emotional even speaking know, about yeah. it now. You fell. Has like she, yet, she, yeah, she saw me fall. This is the mother who was always the champion, the yes. warrior. Mom, Your hero, yeah. her hero. What's happening? Yes. My husband, the strong, independent black woman I married. I know. Where is she at? Where is she at? And I'm going to be real with you. Yes. There was one day that changed all of that. Mm. I was in fetal position because a lot of times when you are in that state, you're screaming out and you're crying to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you're not paying attention to what he's saying to you. Yeah, you got to pay and attention. And one of my, I had another one of my pity parties because yes. I used to call them that, yes. you know, your daily pity parties. Mm -hmm. And I'm curled up in fetal position saying, why me, Lord? Why right. me? Mm -hmm. I, I had a stroke on air one uh, 2004 Unbelievable. Um, at Local 6. Mm. Uh, it was uh, the morning news. I was mm -hmm. delivering the morning news and it was 5 a.m. in the morning and they mm. cued me. Lights. Mm -hmm camera and Actually, nothing, there, came, out. Oh. nothing oh. came out and we're sitting on the desk just like we're sitting right here mm -hmm. and I'm like ah, couldn't understand what was happening ironically this is how things set up mm -hmm. ironically a few months earlier a part of my role as an anchor was to do a story on the early warning signs of a stroke really? so it was heart month it was heart month yes okay. in february, february. Mm -hmm. and now each anchor had a story to do around heart month okay that happened to be my particular story okay so i interviewed a woman her name is valerie green she's a stroke survivor i did the story did the warning signs filed it away yes. like we normally do mm -hmm. we do a story right go on to the next right. one that's it didn't think anything of it right it wasn't until months later mm -hmm. i was passing out recurring headaches kind of blurred vision and the oh, speech was like eh. and I just kept dismissing it I kept dismissing it because I was going through a divorce at the time right so, stress. so I'm thinking yes. it's just stress right, right, right Muriel right. I'm thinking it's just stress right. right I'm just I'm popping Advil like daily bug right. candy right yeah. but it wasn't but until the Lord said listen I'm trying to get your attention right. and he took my voice for just a moment right so that I got your attention got my yes, attention yes and that's what happened and so from that moment the uh, my marriage fell apart, ended in divorce. Sorry about um, that. Yeah. No, oh. that's a good thing. It's okay because it led me to where I am right there now. You go. Yes. But sometimes that's a great thing. It I is. mean, he was I a wonderful man, but at this point, I'm glad that it's brought me to this point. Right. So it's part of my journey. Yes. And the marriage fell apart. My job had a layoff. Mm. Um, we lost. I lost my home because I couldn't hold the home to my by right. myself right. on one income and no income at that point. So it was like all these things happened spiraling out of control, control at right once, at like, no fault of my own right oftentimes you know how we talk about oh it's my fault and no I didn't do anything no. yeah no you didn't how do can this thing. how can this happen to me I'm sure you guys have been through oh, that yes. right yes, definitely you're right and so it's that moment where I'm talking to a girlfriend on the phone and I'm crying mm. about all of the stuff that I have the yeah. shoes mm -hmm. and the clothes and, and now I don't have my big house and I don't know what to do with this and she's like, like shut up this Stop the madness. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Yes. And quit your whining. Mm -hmm. You've got because your help. all of that stuff that you have, that extra stuff Just that you're stop. talking about, I want you to go and find a group of women in transition <laughs> and give them all of the things you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Cecily was like, I want my stuff. Yeah. These <laughs> shoes? I know, right? I mean, these shoes, these shoes cost such and such. <laughs> these Jimmy Choo's. <Chews. laughs> <laughs> and that's what I said. <laughs> what? And she said, yes. Give it to them and then watch God fill your hand 
more yeah. than you can have imagined, right? Growing up, I came and here from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Okay. At the early age, you know, sac passé. Yeah, not <laughs> boule. <laughs> um, at the early age of three. And um, when I got here, I came here with one of my uncles. And so, unfortunately, a lot of unfortunate things happened where I was mm. placed into foster care. Oh, no. Um, due to child abuse, a lot of the child abuse. Oh, and, so sorry to hear that. Yes. And I had to go from place to place, bounce around. And, you know, it was really hard just adjusting, coming here and not having no other family because my biological mom and all my siblings, everyone, my grandma, mm -hmm. everyone is left back in Haiti. So you just came with him just to, your mom sent you with, with him? With, his, with her brother oh, okay. um, and his wife. And I came here with another cousin who's mm -hmm. like a sister as well mm -hmm. to me. So it was just us. That's right. all I had. Okay. And when me and her was taken away and we kind of had to separate mm -hmm. and move from place to place, it mm -hmm. was just kind of difficult to adjust. And I right. became such a fighter. Yes. I'm definitely not the person that I was back then. Mm -hmm. I was always, I would, it was like I had a lot of build up anger. Of course. And the way for me to release it was by fighting, um, mm -hmm. was by just having, I felt like I always had to defend myself. Yourself, uh -huh. um, there was a guard that guard. was a guard that was just up. I felt like I couldn't trust anybody. anyone. Mm -hmm. One. So for a long time, I held that guard. I felt unloved. I felt like, you know, Aww. why me? And no child should have to feel that way. Aww. Exactly. And I had to grow up so quickly and I figured a lot of things out. Things that you know, most kids have a normal childhood, right. and I felt like I didn't get to experience a normal childhood because right. of having to always be in survivor mode. Uh, my household was happy for a little bit, and then I would say it was roughly, it started getting rough when I was probably about nine or ten years old. Um, what happened? Uh, my mom actually became uh, addicted to gambling, so it oh, left boy. me to be a parent in my home for my uh, younger brother, okay. who was two years younger than me. And she also had a male friend that would babysit us sometimes. Mm -hmm. okay. um, he uh, began to uh, molest me at 10 years old. Oh, no. Yes, so it was, it was rough for me, and I didn't really speak about it. I didn't tell anyone about mm -hmm. it because I felt ashamed. Yes. That they wouldn't believe you? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And at 10 years old, when you don't have someone that um, that talks to you, it's it's really mm -hmm. hard to open up and say anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, so she was just gambling out of the house. She was not home and he was basically the only one there with you. Correct. He was there uh, some of the time and she was gone pretty much majority of the time. It kind of left me to uh, raise myself to kind of grow and mm -hmm. be a little adult I guess right. I was kind of uh, feeding him and making sure my little brother was good right. and taking care of the home so it was like I was a 10 year old adult at, so mm -hmm. at the time did you realize that it was wrong did you say no I didn't I never said no okay I, I didn't actually I didn't really know it was wrong okay mm -hmm. I, I knew it it felt mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. I didn't know what it really was right but I can't say I really knew if it was right or okay. wrong. I just knew that this was something I didn't know anything about at yes. that time, prior to that. Stop having the period, and she was like, you haven't been having mm. you know, your menstruation. She was mm -hmm. like, what's been going on? You haven't been coming to me. Oh. And then she was like, lay down on the bed. Oh. And I was like, okay. So I laid down on the bed, and she seen that my stomach was bumped, mm -hmm. and she was like, I'm taking you to the doctor. Oh, my goodness. What? Yes. So. <laughs> I went to the doctor and I found out that I was five months pregnant and I was 11 years old. Hold on a second. So you were pregnant with her boyfriend? Was her, it was, he was a male friend. He was a friend. Yes. Oh, okay. It wasn't her boyfriend. No. But you were pregnant for him? Yes. Well, at first, I want to thank you both. Um, you know, so often uh, you have people who have platforms mm -hmm. and they're not willing to share their platforms with others, but I want to thank you both for sharing your platform and allowing me to be here. Um, I find it such a privilege and such an honor. So oh, I really appreciate wow. the both of you and the work that you're doing in the community. Thank you. We awesome. appreciate your support. Absolutely. <laughs> you're such an inspiration to us, not only us, but as well to the community. And we know that you're busy, so we appreciate you taking time out to come and join us. My pleasure. Et puis nous content nous gagnons ces haïtiens avec nous. Oui. Mais nous connaissons des fois que la loupe. Yes. Dégagez. Oui. Yeah. Yes. Tell you, and I can be honest with you. Um, I don't even look at it mm -hmm. as being the first Haitian American. I just look at it as being a role model mm -hmm. and an inspiration to others who might have thought that you know running for office and being 
uh, somebody who is not from this country right. and just taking the chance and taking the risk. I just want to be an inspiration to anybody else. And you don't have to be young. You can be an older person right. and you still have dreams or desires. So I just want to let folks know that first thing is that you cannot be afraid. You know, yes. fear, fear stops us for do mm. from doing so many things. Absolutely. And I always look at it like this. What's the worst that can happen? Right. You can, you can fail. Mm -hmm. but that makes us who we are, you know? Not all of us uh, win every time. Yes. So it's, it's just letting other folks know that, you know, hopefully when you see me, you just see some type of inspiration, maybe something you were afraid mm -hmm. of doing. Yes. Um, then you're gonna say, you know what? Uh, somebody else has done something. Yes. Somebody else has stepped out there. Right. So why not me, yes. you know? So that's how I look at it, but I find it a privilege and. I would have never thought that I would be in this position. Wow. But I know wow. we serve an awesome mm -hmm. God, right? Yes. You know, right. that does uh, impossible things. Absolutely. So, so that, that's why, you know. You make us look yeah. good. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I can come to you and say that you have breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And until that day that it happens, happens to you. you will never understand how that feels. That is a feeling I can't even explain to you. Sorry. Wow. It's okay. No, that's okay. It's, it's, yeah. wow. it's life changing. I can't really. even imagine. And um, so I just remember wow. I, was, I was by myself. So, mm -hmm. and because I'm thinking that there was nothing, you know, it, I wasn't. They weren't, they weren't going to give me news that I had breast cancer. Because you were like, and they, they did. kept saying, "Oh, it yes. might not be anything." Yes. yes, you do not think they're going to tell you that until yeah. the day they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you called your husband yeah, right I then like, and there. And it was. And I can laugh about it too, and right. I only cry because I, I remember, I reminisce about that, that day. feeling, that yes. day, and it's, it will affect you for the rest of your, your life. life. But I can still rejoice in it, you know, yes. because I, re here. I can recall the fact that how my spirit wasn't broken mm -hmm. because of that. I was, I was resilient. My friends and my community, they were, they were just awesome. You said, awesome. I'm going to beat this. Heck yeah. And yes. that's right. <laughs> Three right. years later. Three years later. Yeah, I'm a survivor. Yes. I'm a yes. survivor, yes. That is beautiful. Thank did you. Did you have to go through any chemotherapy or I radiation? I did. I did. And I think the scare for me was is that um, the day when I was diagnosed, it wasn't just that they said, you, um, with the biopsy came, pos came back positive, mm -hmm. you have breast cancer. Mm. Period. They explained to me okay. that the type of breast cancer that mm -hmm. I had was triple negative. Mm -hmm. And there are like three receptors, or typically your, um, there are three receptors that are common among breast cancer. Okay. Mine is triple negative because none of my mass did not have any of those tissues. Okay. So what that means is that it can be a very aggressive form and only chemotherapy is oh, typically the, help it. the, yeah, exactly, the that heal. can eradicate it and, you know, to hopefully to give you um, that lifelong expectancy, mm -hmm. excuse me, because mm -hmm. it is the most aggressive breast cancer. The oh sad gosh. thing about that breast cancer is that it's very high rate for African American yeah. women. Triple negative is. Oh my goodness. And that's Barack important. Obama in 2016. Well, tell them that. Tell yeah. them that. I'm sorry. I mean, yes, that's I'm, important. Yes, it really is. It's um, the diagnosis of a triple negative. It's becoming so common now among mm -hmm. African American women, even women of color, Hispanics as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the most aggressive breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us what led you into law enforcement? Yeah. So, I look back to two very distinct interactions with law enforcement that led me to this life of service. So the okay. first, uh, when I was younger, my brothers and my mom and I, we were in involved in a traffic crash. Okay. Okay. And I, I just remember us, we, we were traumatized from it. You know, we had never been involved in mm -hmm. anything like that before. Right. And uh, I'll never forget the police officer who showed up. You know, his, he was professional. His uniform was crisp and clean. Mm -hmm. His car was immaculate. He drove us home in his uh, police car, oh, and, you know, nice. as a little boy, you kind of look up of to course. police officers. Right. Uh, but the thing I remember about him most was just the, the compassion he showed and, right. and the kindness he showed to our family. Right. So then fast forward a few years later, I was a young teenager, you know, my hair was a little longer, and I was, <laughs> you know, stopped by the police. Uh -oh. and, and that interaction was very, very different. Mm. And, um, it wasn't so nice. No. Yeah, so I was just a young kid cutting through some yards to go mm -hmm. to the store, right. and, and I just don't, I didn't like the way I was treated, and that, that officer, was he was disheveled, he wasn't clean shaven, he didn't take care of his uniform mm -hmm. or his appearance. Okay, okay. And, but the, the thing I remember him about the most is he didn't treat me with dignity okay. and respect. And I always said that you know if I want if I become a police officer moving forward, right. mm -hmm. I'm going to be like that first guy yeah, that I looked up to, and not that second guy. Yeah, right. yeah. He left a lasting impression. That's he, what happened. A very lasting impression for both of them on very me. Good.
What led you to want to be Orange County Sheriff? So I had been with the Orlando Police Department for 28 years. I was chief at the Orlando Police Department for almost four years okay. and did a lot of great things there. We were able to reduce crime, reduce officer-involved shootings, yes. reduce use of force, yes. and reduce complaints um, by our citizens on our officers. So, okay. And of course, dealt with uh, the tragedy of Pulse. And I really liked being oh the chief of police in Orlando, loved working for uh, Mayor Buddy Dyer. Okay. Uh, but when I heard that Sheriff Demings was gonna leave and become Mayor Demings, right. I said, well, who is best equipped to fill that position? And I thought to myself, well, yeah. I've been a resident of Orange County for 30 years. I've got 28 years of experience. I'm mm -hmm. chief of police of the right. largest municipal police department mm -hmm. here. I've been to the FBI National Academy. Wow. Um, so I thought I was best equipped. And my dad still wanted me to have that foundation of school mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Okay. Of course. So I was sent to live with um, my godmother. Okay. Right. and. While there, mm -hmm. um, there was a young man in the home, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, um, I was molested. Oh, no. And of course, you're warned, don't talk about right. it, don't say anything about it. You'll hurt you this know, person, they won't hurt, believe you. They won't believe you. Who's going to believe you? No. Your child. Yes. And um, I I'm remember sorry. telling, yeah, a sister, mm -hmm. a half-sister that I have that, you know, something took place that really wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And I was removed from there. Oh, wow. Yes. After after about a year and a half, though, okay. Okay. I was removed from there. And um, took the common entrance exam, which is the exam that you take in Jamaica to attend high school. Okay. You know, there's high school, there's secondary school. Mm -hmm. And at 10 years old, I passed that exam. That you're so smart. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I think I was... Um, Focused mm -hmm. there you on, go. On, on definitely achieving it because it was a big deal about taking that deal. exam. You yeah, know? Right. so it is a big deal. I thank you um, for that. I think that it was one of the highlights for me, mm -hmm. you know, that because your name is published in the newspaper. That's right, it's a big you, deal. It's a big deal, yeah, you know. And from there, I, I attended high school in Jamaica for an additional two and a half years, okay, before I migrated here, okay. And once you got here, it was, oh, we need to put her back because she's coming from a third world country. Of course. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. And then I was tested. It was, oh, mm -hmm. she's a little above. Yeah, yes. push her forward. Well, we're going to push her forward. Mm -hmm. So I attended high school in Brooklyn. Okay. All Brooklyn right. in the house. Yes, Brooklyn. <laughs> I went to Sheep's Bay High School. Okay. And unfortunately, that school was in an area that was uh, very racist. Mm. It really was. You were called the N-word. and. Remember, like I'm it was young. nothing. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was no big deal. You know, so I was young. So, like, oh, yeah. that's not a good word. No, <laughs> no, mm -mm. I'm not supposed to be called that. No, so, um, <laughs> I, um, as a strong mm -hmm. human being right. that was still young, was like, don't call me that. That's right. Good for you. Yeah, that's I'm not, not putting that's up not with that. No. Not at all. As a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, I think the first person that called me back, I took off my shoe. <laughs> oh, you were ready. <laughs> Literally and figuratively saved me. Mm. Saved your life. She did. And it was it was so cute because there was one time I, we had educated about 2,500 kids down at Celebration High School. And I was calling her on the way home because I'd call her after we did something big every time, right? <laughs> And, and I said, I said, oh, I don't, you know, Cordy, I said, we just educated 2,500 kids and they really loved it and they mm -hmm. got it. And I said, thank you. I go, you had something to do with that. Yeah. She was real quiet yeah. and she goes, that's kind of heavy. Yeah. I go, well, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Yes. I said, but I want you to get, because you made the choice that you made. Yes. I get to make that kind of difference. Yeah. But you know what? We want to share with the viewers because as you're speaking on it, we want to tell them. You tell them what it is. What is it that you do? Of course. What does Jan do? In what the a good community? segue, huh? Yes. <laughs> we didn't even plan it. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. So I founded Paving the Way uh, seven years ago, and we do human trafficking awareness and prevention training specifically wow. for you. Okay, wow, for wow. you. Wow. Uh, my family, uh, especially my mother, you know, uh, my parents split when I was really young. Mm -hmm. And so for the most part, I was raised with my mother in a single okay. parent household. Okay. It was you know, me and my tough. three sisters. Yeah, okay. it was tough. It was really tough for her. I learned to give her a lot of grace once I became a mother. Because mm -hmm. yes. as a kid, I didn't have, I understood. Mm -hmm. As a kid, I had no understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was very, it was tough for us. You know, my mother was raising three daughters yes. on her own. And, you know, she was managing her own mental um, wellness. Yeah. And she got a chance to meet her biological mother right 
right mm-hmm. before she passed, only to find out that her biological mother was adopted too. Oh my goodness. And so our childhood was very strained. Um, it was just, a bit, I would say, a lot of violence, mm. a lot of dysfunction. We just did not seem to have a way to operate in peace in that home. Mm-hmm. And that comes from generations of Absolutely. Um, dysfunction, okay. unhealed trauma. Yes. And so my mother, very powerful, very anointed woman, mm-hmm. she just struggled. Yes. Okay. You know, I can't imagine what it was like, you know, raising us of course, course. By, herself. Know, by herself. It's tough. Right. And she did it. You know, I think we had our breaking point a breakthrough in our relationship mm-hmm. I would say about a year and a half ago okay. and of course we were in a heated argument and we were mm-hmm. yelling and screaming and she says you guys always give me such a hard time you always say I'm this I'm that right. but what y'all don't know is I did it on my own and mm-hmm. I didn't leave y'all mm-hmm. and when she said I didn't leave y'all something right. about that shifted my perspective mm-hmm. and I learned to give her compassion I'm like yeah. you know what she, her mother left her. There you go. Right. And then her mother's mother left, left her. her. Mm-hmm. So the best way that she knew how to be a good mother was That's to stay. Right. So she mm-hmm. stayed and she stayed with all of her mess and right. she wasn't the best, but she was there. Yeah. And in her mind, that was being a good parent. Right. And so what I, my journey in motherhood has been to, um, I guess heal mm. from the generational pain that That's comes right. along with abandonment right. and neglect. And so just having that understanding, I learned to give her grace yes. and appreciate the journey. I had to say, you know what? Thank you for not leaving. Absolutely. It wasn't easy. It was a lot of things you could have done better. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of things that you've done that have damaged me, that have hurt me, right. but I give you grace. Because yes. I'm thinking, I'm looking at my three daughters mm-hmm. and because you stayed, mm-hmm. because let's say you left. Right. If you left, then I would have been in that same That's position same that you're situation. in, trying to navigate neglect and navigate abandonment. Wow but you stayed right. and it was painful yes. but you passed the torch and so now I get to raise three amazing daughters yes. who haven't experienced any type of trauma yes. or abuse but it had to start with her and That's so right. just having that intergenerational understanding mm-hmm. has brought about a lot of um, healing for us and so awesome. you broke the generation I broke curse. the curse I broke- look back and, and thank my mom for one seeing that okay my son may be going down the Wrong path. Wrong path. Let me do some course correction now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so I, I, I appreciate that. And so, um, and that, you know, that was my life. And I, I spent a lot of time uh, out in the community, okay. you know, played football for Willie Mays um, Cougars okay. at Willie Mays Park, <laughs> uh-huh. played football in Carver Shores for the Boys Club. So okay. I was always outside. My That's sister, right. um, you know, wasn't outside as much, uh-huh. uh, but I got a chance to just, you know, really hang out. And, right. and I didn't have a, a, a male figure in the home. Okay. So, you know, I didn't go and uh, go fishing mm-hmm. and you know, camping and okay. things like that. So I kind of grew up uh, on my own okay. outside. Uh, but when I came back in the home, it was a loving place, that's a good. lot of correction. Right. Yes, uh, that's right. You know, and, you need that. And again, while I didn't appreciate it then, I, I look back and say thank I you to my mother now. and my grandmother now. Yes. And I'm, you know, my mother, um, beautiful woman, woman of the yes, community, um, and also my grandmother uh, is 97 years old, God still bless living. Her. Yes, so we're uh, <laughs> excited and 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 pleased and and thankful that we still have her, you yes. know, with us. Uh, and I just thank the Lord every day for, for the family that I have. That's beautiful. Yes. You thank know, you. you mentioned that you didn't have a male figure growing up. Did you have any male mentors, uncles, or? Yeah, so uh, while my father didn't live in, in the home with mm-hmm. us, uh, I was very close with my father's father. Okay, okay good. Because I spent my summers in uh, Valley, Alabama. Okay. So, you know, in the country. So that's yes. where, you know, we had a, uh, had a garden. Okay. Uh, and so I, I learned some of my uh, some of my outdoor skills there. Mm. So while Very my good. father wasn't there then, mm-hmm. I was close to my grandfather. Okay. Uh, but uh, later on in my uh, young years, mm-hmm. my uncle Ernest Page mm-hmm. okay. was very fluent, influential in, your life. Uh, in my life. Awesome. Uh, he and my older cousin Ernest Page the oh, second. Mm-hmm. Now Dr. Page. Mm-hmm. And then when I say Ernest Page, I, I need to correct that and say Mayor, Mayor Page. Okay. There you go. That's yes. right. Mayor yeah, Page right. and uh, <laughs> Dr. Page. Those are two um, male figures in my life that really had, yeah, and you know, and guided That's me awesome. and corrected me, and Good. you know, two uh, two men that I look up to. Mm-hmm. You know, my cousin Ernest was um, growing up. He was the uh, coolest person that I knew, okay. but he was also the smartest mm-hmm. person that I knew. And so, at a young age, I realized that it was cool to be smart. That's right. You know, and so you know, oftentimes you hear about kids who are smart but they kind of dumped themselves down yeah. because it's not cool. It's not I always cool, grew right? up knowing that it was cool to be smart because I knew my cousin was smart, smart. Mm-hmm. 
and to me, he was the coolest guy yeah. around. So, uh, so I never had that problem of trying to dumb myself dumb down, down because, if anything, I stood up yes. because he, uh, in, you know, insisted that I do so. Good. I'm right. glad you did. Yes. <laughs> when I read your story on Facebook that you shared, it impacted me so bad. I literally teared up because I said, oh, my gosh, somebody else is going through the same thing that I'm going through. And it, I just can, I can relate. Yeah. And so what made you decide to share that story, you know, being so, such a prominent figure here in the community? Yeah, well, what I, I really think that um, a lot of times we are not transparent enough. Mm. We want to have this perfect image. We want to maintain what we think society expects from us. Exactly. And I, for one, just saw a lot of people around me hurting. Mm. And I'm like, maybe I can help them with some of this healing mm -hmm. if I just tell them yes, what story. I have been through right. and what I did to overcome it. So that's what was really the driving force. It had nothing to do with me. Mm. A lot of people come forth or are more transparent because it's healing for them. Right. Well, when I came forward, I had already experienced my healing. Mm -hmm. Can you okay. tell the viewers what it is that you were battling? I, I had a, 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 a bout with depression. Um, I, being in the entertainment industry, it's oftentimes that the people that are in the spotlight, mm -hmm. they lose themselves. Yes. They lose the human element because everyone expects you to be invincible. Right. They, don't, they don't think you get tired. They don't think you're allowed to be hoarse. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't think you don't feel like singing one day. And then sometimes when you do, society will beat you up because yes, they're like, oh, you have this gift. You don't want to use it or you're right. taking it for granted. That's and that's not, that, that's not the case. I'm just a human. Right. Right. right, and I'm not superwoman, right. nor superman. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, so, so the, I, I really, you know, battled who I was versus who CC Tenille was, yes. and people can tell you all day long that they there's no difference between the two but you're definitely a different person when yes. you're on stage versus yeah. when you're off stage yeah yes. because you have to be able to channel one thing I, I tell people all the time about the stage is that when I take the stage all right because I'm such a transparent so, so, so vulnerable mm -hmm. if you will when I take the stage you know generally it's 300 plus people right. in the room right and so imagine all of those 300 people pulling from one. Yes. Right. All of their energy, negative, positive, positive. good, right. bad, right. happy, sad. Yes. Okay. They're all pulling from one person. Mm -hmm. And so when I would finish, I would be depleted. Mm -hmm. But then when I got home, yes. I didn't have anybody to build me up. Like a yellow rose, all along the one I should have chosen. for me and it truly shows truly shows now i know and i'm not afraid to love it now i see all i had to do was trust you now i need and now i need i need you to forgive me i'm ready to get back to our beginning Was it broke? Try